Okay, this is a video about uh, a file I made that downloads data and then demonstrates the trends in data and then evaluates the cost of capital. I am was told to stop rambling on and I was told to stop you know, talking about crap. You know, well, they're out there and all that stuff, so. Okay, but I'm not going to, because I'm sick of this. This is too boring. I'm not going to be some perky person. Just, you know, saying, ah, this is a new Excel file or some crap like that. Here's what this file does. And I think, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to have a, about four or five videos, at least, on this and what you do is you put in a, a you don't have to do anything but it takes a, a, a data from yahoo finance.com and then market watch and then the summary page on uh, 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 yahoo finance.com and it takes some general data from from the uh, st louis fed and then you put your own ticker symbols in and you put your own ticker symbol separately from uh, Market Watch and uh, 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 Yahoo Finance. Now I just press Shift Control C. That's the only thing I'm going to do in this video. Now, once you put your own ticker symbols, this is for beer companies. I admit I had a beer or two already when I'm doing this video. That's why I'm furious about. It. So if people moan about me telling that. I was in Mongolia and had a wonderful time paying my $20 per room and now I'm in Switzerland and I bought a coffee for about $30. Well, francs, but that's the same thing. Okay, and here's what you do. Now, the first sheet, uh, the first sheet we have, it yeah, uh, goes through and it shows you, okay, let's look at the trends in the earnings per share. Let's look at the market cap. Oh, it's a little bit big there. Let's look at the P-E ratio. And you can get these over time. When you get these over time, now again, I'm going to explain in another video exactly how to change the, the, the ticker symbols, how to find the right comparables and all that stuff. I don't know if I very good explaining that one but you, you know you can see here this is the classic problem okay we can take a forward PE or a trailing PE if we take a, 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 a just a regular trailing PE the problem is some of these you know number one the PEs don't stay very stable over time that's what you hope that they stay stable and then you can use Use you you use a, a P in your valuation. They don't stay stable. Okay, this one Coca Cola, good. They started by whatever. Uh, Heineken, they didn't stay very stable. And uh, Carlsberg, our, our our company that we used before, we couldn't even compute them. And then you can also take this and by downloading the data from market watch you can also get like trends in uh, ROEs now I you know maybe you should press shift control P or something to really see that uh, part of the reason the PEs are so different is the ROEs are different and the trends are different and the growth rates are different let's press shift control one again okay and then we have the same sort of analysis and I suppose I should uh, move this over here. Okay, and let's... Uh, now, what I did here is I selected different companies. You just turn them on and off. You just have a little counter, which counts the trues. And then you make a, a match against these trues and then an index to kind of show them. And then we can see, well, what's happened? This company, the... Anheuser-Busch, the, the EBITDA went up, our Carlsberg company, the EBITDA basically stayed the same. Maybe that's why the uh, uh, EV to EBITDA is different. I'll explain how the choose command works and all these things work. Okay, now once you have that, then we're going to compute 
the, uh, the, the cost of kept equity using different techniques. Now, one technique is to essentially take a, a, a value driver a formula, which I didn't show you. That's the, the, the formula where the P-E ratio is a function of the growth, the return, and the, the, the cost of equity, and you back it, you put the P-E ratio in. So we got these different P-E ratios. Again, I switched it off for these crazy kind of results you get very often with this. Okay, I switched off, and then I tried to take the growth rate from what the investors said the growth rate would be, but some of these things were 25% over five years. That's a gigantic growth rate. That's absurd. So I limited it to 10%. I could also limit it to 5% and just compute the only the, the, the recalculate only the sheets lift. I'm going to leave it at 10%, which I think is an absurdly high growth rate over 10 years. And then you can get, you can back into the cost of equity capital. Now there'll be a separate video explaining how I use the short-term growth rate, the long-term growth rate, and the stable uh, ROE compared to the, the cost of equity, and you can get the different costs of equity. Now, what I want to emphasize is that these computed costs of capital using today's uh, uh, stock prices are, are, are very low. Okay, now if I would put instead, I would put a higher earnings, much higher earnings, and I would compute this, then you get a High, much higher cost of capital. So it's very dependent kind of on what you think the stable growth rates will be in the, the long term. Maybe I'm going to put 2.5% back here. It's also very dependent on what you think the short term versus the long term growth rate is going to be. So if I put 10%, oh, 10 years, I get an enormously different cost of capital. So you can say, ah, I don't like that method. I don't blame you. Now you can do almost exactly the same thing, and in this time, instead of using the the the, the P/E ratio, use the EV, not to EBITDA, but the EB to EBIT ratio. Put some kind of limit on the growth rate, and again, let's say this is four percent, and then we'll get a higher. This is supposed to give you the overall cost of capital rather than just the. The, 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 the equity cost of capital, okay? And then if you don't like that, here's another thing you can do. You can use this idea, I'm pressing shift control C for just a minute. You can use this idea that when the cost of capital is equal to the return on equity, if that was stable over time, which it's not going to be, but you can uh, say, well, look, if we get the, if we go down here and put the, it should say down here, this should say the market to book ratio, this should say the ROE, excuse me for not putting the scales in, but we could go down to when the market to, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the market to book is equal to one and see what the ROE uh, uh, is and then use that as a basis to the cost of equity. So get this if you put a zero intercept I'm going to go through this uh, again in a whole other separate video on cost of capital this is going to be a course one in cost of capital and then you can see that the the the, the cost of equity capital is is only four percent okay again I selected various companies I excluded various companies and the good news is that R squared on this is pretty high okay all right, not perfect. And then you can do again the same thing with the, now in this case, the, the R squared is lower, but you can do the same thing to get the overall cost of capital. Again, I excluded some companies and I said, well, when the enterprise value, not the market to book or the price to book, but when the enterprise value to enter invested capital is equal to one, not all of these had a, ratio above one, which suggests this ROIC is greater than the, and this ROIC is computed based on the pre-tax cost of capital. By the way, this uh, uh, trend analysis, you can go up here and say, oh, let's look at the pre-tax ROE and see kind of what it is. So some of these companies had a very high 
return. Others like our Carlsberg didn't have that high return. I think I already did this with this one. We looked at the return on equity, you know, that's why I did the shift control piece. So, so this whole thing, the idea is you can just press a button and that's going to be in our next video, how to press a button. And then you can see, you can uh, 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 get these estimates of the cost of capital without paying Bloomberg or anything else. Okay, now another thing you can do is the old-fashioned dividend discount model. And what I'm going to do below here, I'm going to, in a separate video, we're going to go through, this is going to be like a course on the cost of capital. I think it's really important. It's kind of the first thing I did in my stupid career in the 1970s, was testify in front of the courts. What a bunch of crap that was on what the cost of capital is. And we're going to put some data in for the long term or growth rate, short term growth rate. We can use different companies, you know. Where's our. Uh, oh, this I didn't put uh, so we can use our different cost uh, companies. And then we're going to show you exactly how this uh, uh, backing into the cost of capital works. Now, uh, the dividend discount model basically just says take the dividend yield plus add the growth and then you get the cost of capital. So again, we get if we use a, a, a growth rate of 3%, we get a low cost of capital. If we use the growth rate of 6%, we'll get a much higher cost of capital. So that's the problem with this, rate, this method. You kind of have to guess what the, the, the cost of capital is. It's not that high, actually, even if we put 6% in. Okay, I hope I did that okay, excuse me. All right, now we can use the classic CAPM. It's almost, for me, the worst method. For this one, you have to not only, you have to rely on the betas, but then you have to put in equity market risk, risk premium, put a treasury bond rate. You know the whole story, okay? I think we'll talk about, uh, here, this should have been shift control left arrow, shift all left arrow, rather. Okay, and we get the different betas. Look at all these different betas for the different kind of companies. That's the first crazy thing. And to su suggest that selling beer has a beta of above one, I think you buy a lot more beer in a recession, probably. This one has Coca Cola has a beta of above one, too. I don't know why. Okay, and then what you do is you look at the asset beta that, that's a function of the cost of uh, capital. All right. Looks like I, I got to worry about that thing. Okay. Huh. And then you can get both the asset beta and the equity beta deleverage and releverage the betas and do all that stuff. And then you get these kind of cost of capital. This is a higher cost of equity if we, if, uh, we use this. Okay. And then uh, the rest of the sheet really just has all the backup, all the backup for the cost of capital. And what we're going to do is, is uh, we're going to uh, show you how to kind of find the data. This is the data, for example, yeah, it's straight taken from finance.yahoo and then F5 and enter and go back, okay? Or if you want to find where something comes, you press Control and open square bracket and F5 and go back. Okay, we'll go through all of that very slowly in another sheet, so you can document where all this data came from. And essentially, what's happening is all of these sheets. You have a whole lot of sheets on each separate company, and they download the income statement, the balance sheet, the summary from Yahoo, the stock price. So you, you just press a button and it goes to all the kind of websites, it downloads them and essentially puts them in a, in a consistent format. First of all, remember this was the, this was the format up here. Okay. Uh, this was to get kind of a nice little table showing you what's happening over time. Okay. And then go through various techniques to compute the cost of equity, which is kind of the hardest number to really compute in all of finance, I think. 
And then once you compute that, uh, uh, that number, then you can do all the evaluation. So that's just an introdu introduction to this file, which will be placed on in the website. And it looks like I'm not online. I'm staying in France right now. I'm not in Switzerland. So if you care, you don't care. My Mongolia story was good. Interesting, wonderful place. Okay, um, the uh, oh, look at my look at my internet's extremely slow, so I can show you where I'm going to put it. But essentially, oh, come on, come on, come on. I'm going to put it in the. the uh, <sighs> okay, here's where it, it's going. Why don't I put it in two places? Okay, I'll put it. Uh, here, automatically downloading data from the internet, and we'll also put it in this section, which is, you know, I have kind of a, a, a project finance model, the project finance exercise, and then some advanced issues, corporate finance models, corporate finance exercise, and some advanced issues. I consider this cost of capital with different techniques, a reasonably advanced issue. So it's going to be right in this uh, section. Okay, when we have acquisition models, and we have an advanced section, and then we have some of the other, you know, important techniques. Okay, and then I'll also put it in the update section. So we'll have a, you know, you'll see the, the, the file for this one. All right, so that's video number one on the cost of capital, 60 minutes, not too long.